This meeting is being recorded. Every first Sunday of the month. And this time we have a very young boy. Old man Parth. His call sign is VU3 Zulu November Echo. He did a project in radio astronomy and homebrewed 21 centimeter radio telescope. As you all are aware, radio astronomy and ham radio, the, both the hobbies are complementary to each other. And any further study in radio astronomy, rather astronomy, will be done by radio astronomy because optical telescopes have limitations. And now the science has gone ahead. And you may be aware, one of the radio club radio telescope is installed near Pune. It's a one meter giant meteor radio telescope. And Pune, since we are being a very close to the repeater location, we have an opportunity to visit and witness the telescope. Pullman Path has done a very successful study and assembled his home brewed radio telescope, which is going to share most of the details. His work has been appreciated by Professor Y. Gupta, who is a NCRA director, National Society for Astronomy is the location and they own that, uh, rather they have the telescope near Pune. And mostly Parth will get an opportunity for his internship rather uh, summer vacation or vacation uh, as a vac uh, vacation trainee there definitely it is go going to be a very golden opportunity without spending much time i request parth to go ahead and start his presentation or to view to zne Parth, please start your presentation. I request all the participants to switch off their videos to take care of the bandwidth. No audio. Your audio is muted. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Everything okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today i am part darade and uh, i will take you through an fascinating world of uh, radio astronomy in the next uh, 40 minutes we will delve into the wonders of uh, 21 centimeter hydrogen line uh, and how its uh, role is in our uh, uh, cosmic exploration and uh, i will also add a bonus um, how you can create your own radio telescope using rtlsdr Now, let's embark on a journey into the world of radio astronomy. At its core, uh, radio astronomy is a branch of astronomy that uh, observes celestial objects and uh, phenomena through detection and analysis of radio waves. Uh, astronomers use uh, specialized uh, instruments called uh, radio telescopes to do this. Uh, radio telescopes are uh, specialized radio receivers, uh, just like uh, picking up a car signal when you are traveling uh, in your car. Uh, radio uh, telescopes are basically that, but uh, used for uh, astronomical purposes. Uh, the universe emits radio waves through various processes using inter uh, 
including the interactions between charged uh, particles and magnetic fields, which uh, is famously known as uh, synchrotron radiations. So like a charged uh, particle gas is uh, orbiting, uh, orbiting a planet with uh, magnetic fields, it can produce synchrotron radiations. Uh, Hams uh, might have known the Jupiter IO line, which is when the uh, the IO uh, comes into the mag the Jupiter's moon IO, which is uh, slightly charged, comes into the uh, magnetic field of the Jupiter, which uh, we can detect on uh, 20 megahertz or so. Uh, radio astronomy uh, will not give you much about uh, stars. It will uh, tell you more about galaxies and uh, uh, structures that are way more uh, huge than stars because radio astronomy uh, does not uh, uh, work on the formula uh, that we all uh, use nowadays that is uh, E equal to H mu. It is not uh, like that. Uh, it uh, happens using magnetic fields or uh, uh, hyperfine transitions. That's the uh, cause behind radio waves, and that's how we uh, show them. You can uh, see those uh, giant gas clouds that were hidden until uh, Grote Reber. Uh, in 1939, they detected with it with his radio telescope, whose picture I have given. Uh, these uh, gas clouds are, of course, of um, it, they contain many gases. One of which is hydrogen. Uh, Grote River uh, detected it uh, using his telescope. Uh, many people who are not in the field uh, think that uh, Karl Jansky was a god of uh, radio astronomy, but uh, that's uh, actually not true. If uh, someone who should get more credit is uh, Grote River, because Grote River was uh, the one who looked at it through an astronomical view. What uh, Karl Jansky did was he just uh, uh, concluded in his report that the signals are coming from uh, sky. He was not uh, uh, interested in uh, doing astronomy using those uh, uh, signals. It was Grote River who first uh, made the parabolic dish, who made the first uh, Northern Sky Survey, who made the first, uh, he, he was the only one uh, radio astronomer uh, during World War II. So <laughs> one drop on his house and uh, the entire field, field would have been uh, dead right now. Uh, this is Gro Grote River. He discovered Cygnus A, Cygnus A whose uh, image I just showed and Cassiopeia A, uh, which is also a radio galaxy. Uh, no, it is actually a supernova remnant. And Cygnus A is a radio galaxy. Uh, you, uh, the galaxy cannot be seen in the optical picture. Uh, it can be seen ever so very uh, dimly in the optical picture. But uh, what the galaxy uh, the galaxy size is uh, very short, you can see. Uh, but what the galaxy's uh, black hole does is uh, uh, take all those clouds and eject them outwards uh, using gravity, uh, which uh, makes these huge jets which are much, much larger than the galaxy itself. Uh, in essence, uh, radio astronomers use uh, specialized instruments called radio telescopes uh, that uh, capture these radio waves and convert them into radios, uh, electrical signals of radio frequency. Uh, and they, uh, the computer actually records those, uh, so it's uh, it can be used in future or for interferometry. I will get there. The data collected is then analyzed to create images, spectra, and maps. Uh, 
helping us to understand the universe in a unique way because it's not like astronomy normal uh, visual astronomy or uh, infrared or other types of astronomy where you uh, take an image using a camera it's not a camera it's an antenna and it will give you more about the wave properties of the light than the uh, photo property pho photon properties of the light so it, it will not act work actually as a ccd sensor it will work uh, according more according to the wave theory and building a camera out of radio waves is very difficult uh, i'll <laughs> Uh, now, before we dive into uh, dive more into the radio astronomy, I'll show you what uh, the electromagnetic spectrum is. Uh, first, uh, let's uh, uh, understand what is uh, electromagnetic spectrum. Electromagnetic spectrum is the uh, framework that uh, categorizes all types of uh, electromagnetic uh, radiation based on their wavelengths and or frequencies. It's like a rainbow of energy, but extended to all bands uh, apart from visible. You can actually see the rainbow in the visible. So we are taking the rainbow, we are uh, uh, extending it uh, to all the possible wavelengths. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it has a lot of diversity. We have radio waves at, uh, which can stretch up to mountains or even cities. Uh, we have gamma rays which are uh, so subatomic that uh, they can be regarded as particles instead of waves. Uh, but uh, here's the uh, fascinating part that uh, your visible cannot penetrate uh, anything uh, apart from your transparent uh, materials. So, uh, gamma rays are so tiny uh, that uh, they are like high energy particles so they can pass through your body x-rays can pass through your body and radio waves are so uh, the wavelength is so big that uh, your body will not do anything to them so they will also pass through your body so uh, having the perfect uh, wavelength is required to be blocked uh, and uh, we will be we will be focusing on the radio region uh, uh, which is the realm of uh, radio astronomy uh, in radio astronomy we use radio and microwaves uh, to because they have the similar uh, characteristics they are uh, they are detected by antennas uh, other and they are separate from the rest because others cannot be detected by antennas. So, okay, so this is an atmospheric opacity chart. Uh, it shows how much the atmosphere is distorting the the light coming from space in what wavelengths. So you can see the visible is here. Visible, uh, we have a window at visible. We have some windows at uh, the I so at some bands of the IR. There is a band here in microwave IR region. Uh, we have microwaves here, and uh, anything from uh, five centimeter to ten meters is a, a window which has none atmospheric distortion at all. Uh, it will not be affected by uh, any clouds or anything because the waves are so, wavelength is so big that uh, the particle cannot uh, uh, oscillate uh, with it to cause, uh, uh, to cause scattering. And uh, you can see on the X-ray and UV type uh, side of the band, it's completely uh, flat. Uh, it will the UV and uh, X-ray uh, come into our atmosphere. They ionize the upper layer of the atmosphere, and uh, that's it. There, 
their journey ends there. So to do astronomy of X-ray gamma rays, we have to send uh, satellites in space. Whereas uh, you can do uh, ground-based observations of uh, visible IR, uh, some bands of the area, yeah, and radio waves. So that's a plus point for radio waves. And uh, also as a atmospheric opacity is far less than uh, uh, what uh, visible gets, we, we don't have to build our antennas on mountains. So the logistic problem is also solved. Uh, also the long wave wavelength radio waves, which are uh, yet, which come into the EHF region, high frequency region. Uh, they they also get blocked due to the ionosphere. As you have may know, the atmospheric uh, reflecting and uh, refracting occurs uh, in uh, these bands, you, you, F1 and F2 layers, and uh, F layer in normal day. So you will not uh, get uh, much of, you will not, uh, it is not used to communicate with satellites uh, or uh, do radio astronomy. But uh, we use them for do, doing Earth observation and uh, Earth's magneto, magnetic field uh, uh, sciences. Radio as waves are uh, large enough to be detected by antennas. And uh, you may know that antennas will convert them into electrical signals. So we have the uh, radio waves as it is in uh, electrical. Whereas if you go into IR or visible, they will, uh, you will have to use a detector. It will only detect uh, how much, uh, uh, it will only detect the average of, of an exposure or uh, how can they say this? So radio waves will give you more uh, fundamental, will show you display you a more fundamental properties of the wave, like frequency, it will give you wavelength, it will give you, it will also give you the phase you are on. You will, you will al also be able to distinguish multiple wavelengths using a single antenna by using Fourier transform, which is splitting the signal into various fundamental frequencies. Or, uh, whereas in uh, visible or uh, uh, infrared, which is called as optical astronomy, uh, you will not uh, get those wave properties. You will only get the uh, only get the image, only get the detection where where is where it is bright and where it is not. So we can record these phases in radio astronomy, which will which will be very easier, uh, which will be very advantageous for radio. And that is why radio astronomy is still winning in the modern times. We have not get rid of it because it is an important uh, part of today's uh, field. So let's uh, delve deeper into a remarkable tool of radio astronomy, the 21 centimeter hydrogen line. This uh, spectral line uh, holds a unique uh, information of our universe within its uh, wavelength. The 21 centimeter hydrogen line is a specific radio wavelength emission from uh, hydrogen, neutral hydrogen atom. So it means uh, the hydrogen atom is not ionized or uh, going through a magnetic field. So the hydrogen, it will give us basically, uh, it will show us where hydrogen is because it is uh, neutral. Uh, so so it is not uh, related to any phenomena. Uh, how this uh, originates is that uh, you have a proton and an electron. So uh, they can have their spins parallel or they can have their spins anti-parallel. Uh, what happens is uh, when the electron is orbiting the proton in parallel spin, uh, you will versus compared to the anti-parallel spin. Uh, the parallel spin requires more energy because those uh, spins are uh, uh, in the same direction. So the parallel spin will have uh, more uh, energy to it, while the 
anti parallel spin will have uh, a low lower energy state so over time naturally uh, some of the hydrogen which was in parallel state will try to convert itself into lower energy state so over time from the beginning of the from beginning of the formation of hydrogen uh, millions of it may take millions of year it may take uh, thousands of year it may take uh, a split second based on totally random uh, uh, timing it will shift uh, the flip uh, the flip causes an energy difference so you while it goes from parallel to anti parallel it will lose some energy that energy will be transmitted in the form of 1420 megahertz or 21 cm that's why the line is called as 21 cm hydrogen line this uh, of course uh, falls into the radio uh, region of uh, the electromagnetic spectrum now why is it uh, important in radio astronomy the 21 cm hydrogen line allows us to map the distribution of hydrogen gas in our milky way galaxies and uh, other galaxies as well uh, so the uh, you may know the spiral arms of our galaxies uh, they have hydrogen gas clouds in them uh, now uh, with optical astronomy you can only see um, stars and uh, nebulae which are uh, of course illuminated by stars themselves uh, it's uh, hard to um, look through the uh, uh, look through the galaxy uh, and uh, detect other arms which are beyond those arms that we are looking through like uh, i am i am earth here and there is an arm like this i cannot see the arm here using uh, visible uh, optical astronomy but uh, as soon as i shift to radio astronomy uh, both of them have their distinct uh, doppler shift they both have them have their distinct frequencies that's why they don't interfere and they will come directly at me and i can distinguish between this and this due to the doppler shift as radio gives me more fundamental uh, more uh, control over the more uh, information about the properties of the waves i can uh, find out the doppler shift and uh, it will not be affected using the because of the interference and it uh, and it, uh, every object uh, in radio is transparent uh, you can say so that's why i can uh, investigate for, further into the galactic arms Uh, so i'll just uh, show you this uh, image which is the visual uh, what we see of the milky way galaxy you can also see it at the background but yeah this uh, this is the galactic plane and uh, you can see that uh, nothing much uh, everywhere on the galactic plane there is there are some dust clouds and there are many stars there is much of crowding in the middle where there are a lot of stars as soon as you shift to radio astronomy you see those humongous uh, uh, huge uh, jets which are originating from the galactic plane now you could could not have seen those in red, uh, visual astronomy but uh, we have those hydrogen jets and we also note that the center does not have a, a lot uh, more distribution that is because center is not near to us uh, these uh, the arms are that's why they are uh, so bright uh, also the distribution at the center of uh, is uh, uh, avoided in uh, astronomy uh, due to uh, mathematical problems i will <laughs> not get into that so uh, how can i i have the radio i have everything so what will how can i uh, detect uh, the rotation you said path you, you said you could detect rotation so this is how uh, doppler shift which i talked about is when uh, uh, object which is emitting the uh, waves is uh, 
has a relative velocity velocity uh, relative to you so suppose uh, a skateboarder uh, or uh, an ambulance with an siren is uh, coming at me uh, on a highway uh, the ambulance uh, siren has a specific frequency on which it uh, originates and uh, it will uh, it is coming towards me uh, when it comes towards me i will actually hear a higher pitch than the original sound and uh, when it goes away from me i will hear a lower pitch uh, compared to the previous sound so when the uh, ambulance comes uh, suppose the siren should have been e actually the siren will go e <laughs> so uh, that's a doppler shift in uh, sound waves uh, in galaxies we will uh, as you can see here i'll just zoom into that uh, uh, we are here we are the sun uh, we are uh, we are orbiting this and so we are here uh, and there are two uh, observations uh, which we did one is here and one is here so as the galaxy is rotating uh, suppose it comes like this uh, this distance will uh, get shortened and therefore the relative velocity uh, there is a relative velocity here so as it is coming uh, down here it will be blue shifted and uh, this is also coming down here so it will also be blue shifted now uh, depending on how far away from the center and uh, how uh, and in what arm it is uh, it will the velocity of the gas cloud will vary and that's how we can uh, find the rotation uh, and the rotation curve of the uh, galaxy which uh, i will show has a flaw now let's uh, come on to making our own radio telescope we will make a 21 cm line radio telescope as I, the line we just said uh, i have used rtl sdr i have used an low noise amplifier which is called an lna uh, you will also require a computer if uh, bandpass filter is optional i didn't uh, use a bandpass filter if you use a bandpass filter you will require an additional lna make sure that the bandpass filter is of the same frequency band you should uh, use uh, saw filters for this because they are better uh, a company makes them which are very good i have heard uh you will require a parabolic dish if you want to make a parabolic dish antenna you will require a parabolic dish greater than 4 feet your uh, dth tv will not be uh, big enough to reflect the radio waves properly and uh, you will have to make a v4 mf feed you will not get it uh, you will not uh, be able to buy it you will have to make it yourself this is the feed this is the dish Uh, i'll just uh, go through uh, what those uh, materials are actually it's uh, and yeah you can experiment with uh, with them you can use uh, other type of sdr in instead of uh, rtl sdr you can use a uh, uh, low pass filter or a high pass filter if you have those uh, you can use a band stop filter if there is an interference uh, instead of a parabolic dish you can use a, you can maybe construct an horn antenna you can may may be construct an helical antenna <laughs> i have seen a helical antenna radio telescope uh, which was on the set 21 cm and uh, so we'll start with the rtl sdr dongle uh, the rtl sdr dongle uh, works on the chipset of uh, rtl uh, 280 uh, something chip which is an d modulator ic and uh, rtl 8 uh, 820 or 8 r uh, 820 something uh, which is an uh, rf tuner so the analog to digital conversion is done on the rtl and the rf front end is uh, handled by the 
आर इट इज एन सॉफ्टवेयर डिफाइंड रेडियो सॉफ्टवेयर डिफाइंड रेडियो इज एन बेसिकली यू विल टेक द रेडियो फ्रंट एंड एंड यू विल स्लैप ऑन एन अलॉक टू डिजिटल कन्वर्टर टू इट सो uh whenever the uh, there are many types of sd are many types of configurations of sd are uh, one which uh, rtl sd are <coughs> works on is taking the signals uh, uh taking the signals from antenna you will uh, boost them with an lna uh, you will uh you will use a mixer to and so out those uh, to actually modulate uh, to actually tune into the uh, frequency so it is a tunable other some there are some lnas which use analog to digital converter directly at the antenna which uh, which work at lower frequencies and uh, some even go uh, much uh, <coughs> uh, complex than this they will use a super heterodyne and uh, instead of a uh, and at the last stage instead of a speaker they will use an analog to digital converter this configuration specifically gives a uh, high, high bandwidth and it is also working at uh, the higher frequencies that we want but for 20 megahertz <coughs> it is uh, cheap and available and uh, it is small size it is a uh, cheap because uh, the dongle itself comes uh, uh, at 2000 rupees but uh, customs duty wholesale uh, the transportation cost and the middleman charges you will get this at uh, 4000 at market places or uh, 3000 if you get it at 3000 you are very lucky also a plus point is that uh, you can use this uh, with your computer so you will not have to design uh, your own you will not have to make your own computer or buy one next up is the virgo software uh, virgo uses weighted overlap add for your transform which uh, uh, using uh, which uh, helps reduce side loops uh, it has adjustable sdr parameter so i can tune into uh, many frequencies i can use bias t or not we can uh, use the bandpass filter so it has an calibration spectrum uh, which you can take Which means I will uh, I will uh, uh, face the antenna uh, face the dish to somewhere uh, on the ground uh, or a radio black uh, radio black source. Which means there are no radio emissions coming from that at all. Most uh, observatories use uh, point it down. Uh, you can use it to you can also set it to any point in the sky which uh, doesn't have the Uh, uh, radio waves coming like uh, away from the Milky Way galaxy is also fine, but uh, it will have some uh, uh, irregularities. But they can be ignored. Uh, it also has a toolkit for uh, calculating uh, sensitivity performances. Like you can also can uh, calculate uh, the gain of the antenna using the inbuilt inbuilt tools, including tools. it also has an simulate uh, uh, function which can simulate uh, uh, what part of uh, what part of the uh, sky will have uh, what type of uh, uh, plot so you can uh, cross check your observations with that uh, simulator function to check if you really have detected it the dish was a c band uh, satellite dish borrowed from a dish commission branch of a company cost was 0 rupees uh, you will have to be <laughs> those c band dishes are a very uh, old tech so many of them are uh, decommissioned they are not of any use they will be thankful to you for taking this away uh, because the company will also the, the company also doesn't want those antennas lying around they are taking up space and they don't have the money to transfer transport them uh, transporting it uh, will require more money than buying a new dish all together so 
they avoid it you can get it for uh, free next up is the v4 ma field which was custom made with the help of our tin stove maker uh, the ones that make those stores in uh, our villages uh, the field collects the radio waves uh, you can see uh, in the here yeah. this is an offset type of dish so the field is not actually exactly here so what it is doing is uh, the radio waves are coming like this bouncing off the main parabolic dish and uh, collect uh, collecting into the ve4 ma feed uh, you will have to position the ve4 ma feed and uh, make it adjustable because uh, you cannot <laughs> simulate the uh, any so that's it uh, also many cassegrain telescopes use the feed uh, directly here uh, through the axial and uh, there is a refractor here why it is done is so that because the feed does not actually only see the uh, parabolic dish if the dish is not big enough it also sees uh, so the lobes of this will be like uh, uh, like this so it is also spilling over like some radio waves are also uh, entering it uh, from the ground or from the sky uh, so they use this uh facing towards the sky and then they use a ref reflector here because they use this configuration because uh ground is not actually perfectly radioquoid so instead of having the spillover to unwanted directions they can have the spillover uh collect the radio waves from the uh, galaxy itself that is called the spillover uh you can have those uh, plants i will send them uh i have sent them in the pdf you can build an antenna using this uh the copper wire is uh, just a copper wire from a motor you can use a uh, different uh, wire sizes experiment with it and uh, check out which is which is the best for you i just uh, got the one which uh, i had this is the block diagram of uh, how it is done uh the feed feeds into the lna lna is small much it has two coaxial connectors uh, you will want the lna to be as, as close as to the feed uh i just solder it on the feed itself uh if you are not going to solder it on the feed you you should uh, uh minimize the coaxial uh, cable as uh, as much as possible uh actually i have not used lmr 400 uh, i have used another another type of uh, cable here there is rtl sdr and there is a usb cable rtl sdr will also uh, need to provide bias t to your lna if your lna is powered by bias t if not a bias t is just uh, providing dc power through the coaxial cable this is called as bias t if not you will have to use a power supply which i did uh, right here Uh, you can see right here in my laptop right here is my battery uh the feed and lna are there you can see at the picture there's a faint uh, uh, cable coming from down here no uh, the mount can be motorized can be not uh, if you want it motorized you can you will just have to uh, push it around if you are using a manual mount like this uh now let's uh, run into the observations observations can be anywhere from a few seconds to hours long uh, long so 10 minute calibration is uh, required for calibrating the band pulse shape of the radio front and as you can see the feed is uh, the feed and the radio uh, rtl hdr itself are selective to are tuned into a frequency so they are selective to some frequencies more than the other so you will have to eliminate this have a flat uh, line i will just show you uh as you can see the band pass uh, shape is this that means some frequencies are uh, have a very high gain compared to other so you'll have to flatten it out using the calibration spectrum which will uh, record only the band pass uh, band pass shape the calib uh, calibration shape and we will minus it uh, means uh, we will take the ratio of it with uh, with the snr of the uh, average spectrum uh, which will which will give us the calibrated spectrum this is a waterfall it will show 
uh, which frequencies have uh, what power, uh, what uh, SNR uh, relative to the time. Uh, this is the power uh, that's related to the time, uh, average power relative to the time. Uh, it, 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 it shows us uh, whether we are in, moving into the galactic uh, plane or whether we are moving out. Uh, uh, you can see those two peaks here at uh, the near the 1420 megahertz line. Those are uh, two uh, arms of the galaxy itself. So uh, these are blue shifted. Higher in the frequency, mean blue shifted means the galaxy uh, means those uh, arms are coming towards us. Uh, one is uh, much uh, brighter than the other, uh, so that means one is nearer to us than the other. Uh, if you look at the uh, galactic uh, map, which is also created using radio astronomy, <laughs> so we can see those uh, the coordinates at which uh, we. Uh, ran this observation, there are two uh, arms in the way. One is the Perseus arm and there is the other outer arm. Uh, one is much more blue shifted. That means it is traveling faster towards us. Uh, the galaxy is moving like this. So you can see that the uh, sun and this uh, have relatively the same, seed, same speeds. So that, that reflects here. And uh, the other arm, outer arm, is uh, much uh, farther away from the center as compared to sun. That's why there is a more uh, that is a larger speed difference. Let me run another observation for you. This is red shifted. It uh, uh, it it was done in the zone of avoidance, but uh, okay. Uh, you can see uh, that it's red shifted. That means this is moving away from us. Uh, it means uh, our sun is actually traveling faster than this uh, in the galactic plane. That's how we do calculate rotation. Now, uh, just a second. Uh, you can see here, uh, I, I have marked a reference, uh, right? not perfect, but uh, that's, uh, that will show you the idea. So this uh, has just a tiny bit of uh, um bandwidth occupied uh, and you can see this uh, whereas if i show you the other uh, red shifted one uh, it has more uh, it is more broader which means there's more kinetic movement there is more temperature which is which is of course caused by uh, bouncing around of the hydrogen atom so there is more frequency uh, more uh, more velocities and more uh, distribution uh, that's it uh, let's move on uh, the relative power I as i have showed uh, and uh, this can be used to make an image so uh, the telescope goes uh, uh, if you uh, keep it into a point in the sky it will the sky will uh, uh, ro ro rotate around and uh, it will give us uh, scanning uh, so you will first have to decline it uh, at a, a certain declination it will uh, run it for a day take it to the an another declination run it for a day like that we will have we will continue to do that until we have an image uh, we have only some uh, frequency band is uh, included in this. So some extremes which are uh, mentioned here, the, some are masked and the SNR is uh, mean, taken as mean. Uh, this was conducted in Athens, Greece by Pictor Telescope, uh, which was an inspiration for this project and many of the resources that uh, he used are also here. Let's uh, conclude this. Uh, so what is next? You, you, you can build your own radio telescope now. Uh, conclusion, uh, what's next in this? Uh, uh, there is a formula for uh, uh, angular resolution, lesser the theta, the better resolution you have. And uh, it is 1.22 into wavelength upon uh, the diameter of the telescope. 
So uh, if you want a higher resolution with radio telescopes, which, which have a much larger uh, wavelength than uh, uh, visible or higher, will have to get a much uh, bigger diameter of the dish. But uh, that is not the case. Also, you will not have to use uh, long tubes uh, uh, to carry the beam to a central location, uh, as in case with uh, visible. Uh, radio interferometry, which is taking physics into giving a, you a larger telescope without building one. Uh, this works because of the wave particle of the physics. You can record those waves, you can take them to a central location, unlock those hard drives and uh, interfere those uh, uh, waves on a computer, on software. Uh, that's how, that's, uh, that's, you can make much larger telescope without actually connecting those. Uh, like uh, how we uh, took a uh, image of the black hole right here uh, using the event horizon telescopes, which were uh, sending in a hard disk uh, to a central location. Uh, also what's next is INPTA. PTA is, I'll just speed run this. Uh, pulsar timing array, which is uh, looking at the pulsars, uh, taking their times. Uh, if there's a difference in those, uh, in the timing of the pulsars, pulsars which are uh, like uh, they emit the radio waves at specific times, uh, at specific intervals. There is, a, they have. Uh, if there is change in these uh, intervals, you can detect the presence of gravity waves, which was uh, released in the in the press uh, a few days ago. What we have learned, uh, you can check this out. You can create a radio telescope. Radio telescopes are much more cheaper than optical telescopes. So uh, you can, uh, due to radio interferometry, uh, RDL SDR is also cheap. Uh, Doppler effect, we have uh, it got at the galactic rotation problem. We have learned about interferometry. We have learned about how uh, amateur radio has an important role in pioneering radio astronomy. Grote River was. In fact, uh, he was not a radio astronomy graduate because he was the first, he was an amateur radio operator like us. Uh, thank you. And uh, I'm open for questions now. Yeah, thank you, Parth, for this wonderful presentation. For the audience, Parth is youngest ham in our Pune hams group. And he's just 17. So please identify yourself and shoot out your questions. Any questions, please? Uh, please unmute your mic and ask question. Hello, friends. Don't hesitate to ask questions because they will become more interactive. Just check up any questions in the chat box. I think there, there are no queries. So I think uh, I must thank all the participants today for this wonderful morning. Okay, what and is really appreciate Parth. Yeah, Bolo, go ahead. Uh, Ramesh Kagni is asking what is radio frequency. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. Frequency is uh, uh, oscillations per unit time. I'll just uh, show that. Uh, so you can see those uh, that the circle is rotating, uh, revolving around, uh, rotating around, and uh, the x, x, uh, y component of this is uh, depicted in a sine wave. So uh, 
uh, what happens is if I pause right here and uh, the time it takes uh, to uh, uh, for the uh, wave to return at the same point again like this uh, will actually be uh, the time period of the uh, of the uh, wave time period upon the uh, I, Unit uh, unit time upon time period uh, is is the frequency. Uh, how so? Frequency is number of oscillations per uh, unit time. So it uh, the time taken for it to uh, make one oscillation divided by the uh, one divided by the uh, time period, which is uh, if I count one, two, three, four, five. If it takes five seconds. So one over five is the frequency. Uh, one over five is the frequency of this uh, of this uh, wave. Frequency is measured in, uh, uh, in uh, one upon seconds. So it is hertz. Uh, hertz. So we are dealing with the much higher uh, frequencies than uh, one hertz or two hertz. We are dealing with uh, radio frequencies which uh, uh, are going from 30 megahertz which is the 10 meter to 3 gigahertz which is around uh, some part in the centimeter 3 gigahertz to 10 megahertz is radio astronomy you can you also we also have 30 gigahertz and those they come into microwave but yeah that is the frequency for you any other questions? I think we have more. How to make telescope at home? Which optical? What can be the maximum capacity or strength of such homemade telescope? What is radio frequency? Okay. Uh, Mukta is asking what is the maximum capacity or strength of this homemade telescopes? As I have told, uh, as you have seen, uh, we can make a um, Nice uh, image of the sky using telescope, or we can take an image of a specific object, uh, like uh, I have shown here, like the black hole. Black hole or Cygnus A. Cygnus A is a, a nice target for amateur radio astronomers uh, because it is very, which is one of the brightest in the skies. Cassiopeia A is also one of these because it is also. Uh, it is a second to second brightest in the sky, uh, uh, apart from sun. Uh, the black hole image is done using interferometry. If you don't have interferometers at home, uh, or a budget to make two antennas, so interferometry works with uh, two antennas together, uh, uh, emulating a big dish. Uh, you will have to make two radios, uh, radio telescopes for doing interferometry. Or you can just have fun and encounter the galactic rotation problem as I did here uh, in, in this. You can do observations of the Milky Way galaxy. You can plot them out in a map. So please guide me how to make telescope at home, radio telescope or optical telescope. Optical telescope is very easy to make. Radio telescope is also very easy to make, depending on your... Uh, need for optical telescope you will have to buy a gas lab glass slab glass which is actually thick uh, and you will have to buy some abrasive powders which are used in sand papers uh, you'll have to grind the mirror into the perfect shape and you'll have to coat it uh, with aluminium or uh, silver from a, fa a facility vacuum vacuum coating facility facility uh, like we have in giravali in ayuka or uh, we are making a new one at uh, using uh, Indian, Indian, Indian Institute of Astronomy and Ayuka both are teaming up to make a new uh, mirror coating facility. And radio telescope, as I said, you can treat the PDF. That's it. I think we have okay. What what is the advantage of radio frequencies in daily life? Radio frequencies you can daily life. You 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 
own your friends using radio frequencies you uh, your phone works on radio frequencies radio waves your tv works on radio frequencies your tv satellite dish is actually a radio telescope looking at satellite okay friends i think that was the last question thank you very much for attending today's sunday tech talk we will meet next month first sunday for another exciting topic i must appreciate paths efforts in making this or home brewing the 21 cm radio telescope so i declare the presentation is over and the channel is free for any other traffic and we all appreciate parth for this wonderful presentation thanks a lot have a nice day bye